Hey everyone, in this video, I'm going to demonstrate three new features that we've added to the parameter create and edit experience. Let me start by adding a parameter on this workbook. So let's click on add parameter. I'm going to call this parameter city parameter. We'll leave the data type as text, no aliases, and for available values, I'm going to select logical SQL query. And when I do that, you can see that we are now presenting a new validate button next to available values. And then the same button is also uh, presented for initial value as well. Now I have already copied uh, a SQL query from a developer tools to grab the list of city values from uh, the sample order lines data set that I'm working on. So let me paste a query here and uh, I'm going to hit on the validate button and you will see that the UI validates and it's telling me um, some error about the order by class and uh, column number two is out of range. So I'm going to go to the order by class and I'll change this to order by uh, one because I only have one column. And uh, let me try to validate the SQL query again. And now the UI tells me that the available value SQL is valid, right? Now the second feature that we have added for the parameter experience is uh, if you look at available values options, we have added a new option called columns. Now columns essentially allows the user to open up the data tree element. This data tree element for the data set or for the subject area will be presented to the user when available values is using a column type. Let's go back to the parameter tab. Uh, let's create the parameter one more time. We'll call that city parameter. And uh, I'm gonna use column as available value. And when I hit on the option here, it's gonna show me the data element tree, which is essentially all the columns from the sample order lines data set, right? Now, when I select city and uh, click OK, so let me, let's just say that I'm not going to provide any initial values. When I click OK, uh, the parameter gets saved. And when I expose the parameter as a filter control on my dashboard filter bar, um, you can see that the uh, behind the scenes, the parameter is issuing a logical SQL query to the data set, and it's fetching the list of city values in this particular example. Let's look at the third feature that we've added for the parameter experience, uh, which is called enforce validation. Enforce validation, when turned on, will make sure that the initial value is always validated against the list of available values. At runtime, when the parameter is executed, it will also evaluate and make sure that the list of values that the parameter can accept uh, is contained within the list of available values. If it does not, then it will silently ignore those uh, incoming values for the parameters and will not accept it. Let me use the same example. Uh, I'm going to leave the available values to fetch the list of city values using the column type. And when I turn on enforce validation, there is a little tooltip alert that tells me that enforce validation for available value query can impact performance. And this can be true when you use a logical SQL query on uh, high volume data sets, particularly on RPDs and subject areas. Now, just to test the functionality of enforce validation in design time, I'm going to provide a, a junk value as my initial value. When I click on OK to save the parameter, the initial value is validated against a list of city values. And the UI clearly tells me that ABC is not a value that is found against a list of 130 available values. Here's another example. I know that the city has Austin as a valid value, but I'm going to uh, misspell Austin in this case. And uh, when I click on OK, UI validates and is still telling me that Austin is uh, Austin with the spelling mistake is not a valid value for the available values. These three new features that we've added to the parameter experience improves the overall user experience for the author when working with parameters in workbooks. Thank you for watching this video.